Good afternoon, class. Uh, today, we will be um, continuing with my lecture on uh, Chapter 4, the different uh, modes of extinguishment of obligations. Sorry, medyo natatawa ako kasi yung mga sadyante ko sa uh, Section A, sabi nila, Ma'am slash Sir, dapat ang introduction mo sa mga videos mo is, Hey guys, welcome to my... <laughs> Ewan ko sa inyo. So anyway, I, I will stick with uh, good afternoon class or good evening class or good morning class as the case may be. Uh, uh, yung mga welcome to my channel, medyo nahihiya ako sa mga ganyang style eh. Parang pang bagets kasi eh. Ang tanda ako na. So anyway, <laughs> that's very embarrassing for me. So anyway, we will um, be using for this lecture the book of uh, the De Leon's Obligations and Contracts. So at uh, Today's topic specifically is Section 3, uh, yung condemnation or remission of uh, debt. Uh, so this is not a new concept class. Remember that uh, we have already studied this when we studied yung um, um, joint and solidary obligations. Also, we studied this when we studied yung uh, payment or uh, performance. So, hindi na bago, dinaanan na natin. So anyway, condemnation or remission of debt. Gratuitous abandonment or waiver by the creditor of his right against the debtor. Uh, it may be made expressly or impliedly. So remember, the creditor waives his right against the debtor. Uh, waives yung right niya to collect yung uh, credit from the debtor. So remember, this is a form of a donation uh, which requires the consent or acceptance of the debtor. Bakit kailangan ng acceptance ng debtor? ng uh, donation because remember class, hindi mo pwedeng pilitin na magkaroon ng utang ng loob ang debtor sa isang creditor lalong lalo na kung ayaw naman ng uh, debtor na magkaroon ng utang ng loob mahirap bayaran ng utang ng loob class remember, so form of donation, it requires the acceptance of uh, the debtor so anyway, please take note of the kinds of remission as regards effect or extent, remember it may be total or complete. Total meaning it covers the entire obligation. So, kung ang utang mo is 5,000, then uh, creditor remits 5,000. Walang problema. Covers the entire obligation. It can also be partial. Um, only a portion is remitted or the remission may affect only yung accessory obligation. So, 5,000 ang iyong utang, tapos uh, niremit yung kalahate. So, 2,500 na lamang ang iyong um, Babayaran sa creditor, yun na lamang ang sisingilin ng creditor sa'yo. So, there is partial remission there. Or the remission may refer to an accessory obligation. Let us say, 5,000 may nakasang lakang, um, uh, may naka-pledge ka na property, meron kang naka-mortgage na property, uh, meron, kang, uh, meron kang interest, merong uh, penalty, etc., etc. So, these are, again, uh, accessory um Obligation. So, remember the principal obligation here is the uh, loan of 5,000. Tapos, yung pledge, mortgage, um, penalty, and also interest, they are uh, accessory obligations. Pwedeng tanggalin mo na yung mga yun. Pwedeng wala na lang penalty, wala na lang interest, wala na lang uh, nakasangla, uh, either by pledge or uh, uh, by mortgage. So, remember, partial uh, remission. Uh, yung remission also, as regards to form, may be express or formal, and it may also be implied or tacit. So, express or formal, it is made either verbally or in writing. But, obviously, malinaw ito because it has been expressed. Kaya nga, express eh. Hirap na mag-explain ng obvious, ano? So, also, implied or tacit, when it can be inferred from a conduct. Conduct is sufficient and it requires no uh, formality. Ano lang to based on sa actions, alam niyo na, pa-style style niyo, discard-discard niyo. So, it will be inferred or um, ang basis niya is magiging ano yung pagkilos mo. So, throughout um, yung chap uh, section na to, we will uh, uh, learn some uh, implied or tacit form of uh, forms of remission. But as um, also as regards the date of effectivity, yung remission may be inter vivos when the remission will take effect during the lifetime of the donor. Remember, this is a form of donation. So, uh, it is okay to call yung creditor the donor kasi nga, i -re na niya yung obligation, hindi na niya sisingilin, dinodonate na niya yung pinautang niya. So, intervivos, it will take effect habang buhay pa yung creditor. And yun namang mortis causa, remember, it will become effective upon the death of the creditor. It must comply with the formalities of a last will and testament. 
Remember, sa Pilipinas, ang last year investment, magbusisi. Hindi ka pwedeng basta walang gumawa na. At least yung um, notarial will uh, is magbusisi. Although we have yung tinatawag na holographic will that is entirely handwritten, signed and dated by the testator o yun ang pamamana. But, ewan ko kung gagawa kayo nun. Basta mas maganda pumunta na lang kayo sa attorney at magbayad na lang kayo para sa uh, isang uh, notarial will. Uh, para at least uh, sigurado kayo sa formality. So, please take note also class of the essential requisites of remission. Number one, it must be gratuitous, meaning wala siyang kapalit. So, the only cause or consideration is the liberality or generosity of the creditor. Kasi nga, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, ang mga, uh, uh, mga remission of debt is uh, essentially gratuitous. So, walang dahilan kung hindi uh, dahil mapagbigay yung creditor, uh, mabait ang creditor, uh, siya ay galante or whatsoever. So, yun, uh, tanda nyo, cost or consideration is the liberality or generosity of the creditor. What else? It must be accepted also by the obligor or debtor or donee. So, again, katulad ng sinabi ko sa inyo, uh, hindi mo pwedeng pilitin ang debtor na magtaon ng utang na loob sa creditor. Kasi nga naman, mahirap bayaran ang utang na loob. So, remember, there must be an agreement since acceptance of the remission or the offer is uh, required. So, dapat mag-agree uh, mag yung debtor to the remission. The remission must be accepted by the debtor. What else? Parties must be capacitated and must consent. So, um, in number three, remember, the creditor obviously consents to the remission. Kasi sa kanya naman lang gagaling yung ano eh, remission eh. So, hindi naman mangyayari yun if not for the consent of the creditor. Uh, and also, remember that uh, yung debtor required nga yung consent niya. Uh, remember, yung acceptance niya of the remission will signify his uh, consent to the remission. And obviously, both parties must be capacitated to enter into contracts. What else? Uh, the remission must not be inofficious. So, um, in case the donation is... Uh, the, the remission which is actually a donation anyway, is uh, in officious. It may be reduced on petition of the uh, compulsory heirs insofar as they are in officious or excessive. So that yung mga legitimes or pamana ng mga compulsory heirs will not be impaired or pababawasan. Uh, siguro mas madali bigyan ko kayo ng short uh, background sa ating uh, law on um, uh, inheritance uh, or yun nga, succession. Um, pagka kasi namatay kayo class uh, bago kayo mamatay actually you can make a last will and testament now if you make a last will and testament remember um, halimbawa napunta kayo sa akin papagawa kayo ng last will and testament the first thing you will know is that hindi lahat ng uh, ari-arian mo is pwede mong ipamana sa kung kahit na sino-sino so yun ang una yung tandaan if you plan to make a last will and testament kasi meron tayong tinatawag na compulsory legitime which is um to be given to the compulsory heirs. Anong bag-ibig sabihin ng compulsory? Sapilitan. So, itong uh, compulsory heirs mo is yung forced heirs or sapilitan mga heirs. Yung wala kang magagawa at magmamana talaga sila sa'yo. So, anak mo, um, who else? Kung wala kang anak, yung uh, magulang. Kung wala kang magulang, eh, yung, um, yung mga kapatid mo. So, remember, if you have descendants or anak, hindi pwedeng magmana ang mga magulang, lalong-lalo na yung mga kapatid. Pagka naman meron ka, wala kang anak, meron, kang, meron ka pang magulang, remember, hindi magmamana yung mga kapatid. Yung magulang lang ang magmamana. Kung wala, ka nang, wala kang anak, wala ka na magulang, dun lang magmamana yung mga kapatid. Because here sa Pilipinas, mas interesado pa yung mga kapatid eh, na mga kam ng um, mga mana na hindi naman talaga sa kanila. Mas interesado pa yung mga kapatid kaysa sa mga anak. Yun ang tandaan nyo sa Pilipinas, yan ang kalakaran dito eh. So, uh, hindi nila kasi alam yung uh, law. Remember, yung uh, descendants will include uh, descendants will include um, heirs from the ascending line and will also uh, exclude heirs from the collateral line excluded ang ascending line uh, excluded din ang collateral line collateral line descending ascending so yun ang tandaan natin so anyway um sa pilitang ibibigay so uh, let us say you have an estate of uh, 1 million so nung namatay ka yun ang estate mo Bago ako mamatay, nagpagawa ka ng last will. Yun ang estate mo, 1 million. So, um, uh, remember that yung 
portion nun is uh, compulsory and uh, legitimate. So, let us say, class, um, meron kang limang anak. Yan. Ang share ng mga, uh, ay, oh, by the way, class, your spouse, your wife, or your husband, as the case may be, is also a compulsory heir. Unfortunately, kailangan mo talaga silang pamanahan kung buhay pa sila. Sana na lang mauna sila. No? So, anyway, uh, remember, um, itong uh, si, si testator or yung nag tagapagmana, yung deceased, yan, um, meron siyang estate na 1 million, so, meron siyang limang anak. Remember, uh, yung mga anak niya is legitimate, kasi kasal sila nung asawa niya, nung pinanganak sila. So, anyway, uh, ang bawat isang, ang mga legitimate child, they will get uh, one half of the uh, estate. So, remember, class, kung 1 million ang estate mo, they will get uh, 500,000 as their compulsory legitimate. Your children are your compulsory heirs. Yung 500,000, that is uh, one half. Yun ay equivalent sa kanilang compulsory legitimate. So, saan ko nakuha yung one half? That is given by law. So, anyway, um, the one half na yun. Ngayon, um, meron pa siyang asawa. Unfortunately, buhay pa yung asawa niya. Remember, yung asawa, ang share ng asawa is equivalent to the share of one legitimate child. So, remember, yung ating uh, limang legitimate child, meron silang 500,000, di ba? As the compulsory legitimate. So, yung uh, 500 na yan, paghatian nila, nilang lima. So, magiging um, 100,000 each. Ngayon, yung kanilang nanay or yung tatay nila, kung sino man ang natira, yung surviving spouse will get the share equivalent to one legitimate child. So, ang makukuha ng asawa is... 100,000 also. Yun ang kanyang compulsory legitimate bilang isang compulsory heir. So, yung um, estate mo, 600,000, yun na yung compulsory legitimate mo sa pinitang kailangan mong ibigay sa kanila. Now, remember, you can make dispositions only with respect to the 400,000 and yung 400,000 mo is now known as your pre-portion. So, yun ang pwede mong ibigay sa best friend mo, sa driver mo, sa kasambahay mo, i-donate to charity, etc., etc. So, yun ang tandaan. You can make only dispositions up to your, up to the uh, free portion. So, in our example, it is 400,000. So, anyway, papasok natin yung remission. Um, dun sa estate na yan, ni T, na testator, or yung gumagawa ng last will and testament, yun ang testator. Eh. So, um, Meron siyang um, credit actually, which is owing to D, a debtor. Yan. So anyway, yung cred credit owing to D, yung pinautang niya kay uh, D is um, 500,000 pesos. Now, pinalagay ni T, testator, yung sa last will and testament niya, that he is remitting the debt of D, mortis causa. So, upon his death, he will remit the debt of uh, D, debtor. Uh, ngayon, class, remember na yung free portion lang ni T doon sa kanyang estate na 1 million is 400,000 pesos. So, yun ang tandaan nyo dyan. Uh, dahil yung kanyang uh, remission is more than the free portion. Uh, remember, this is a donation. The remission is a donation. The remission slash donation is in officious. It is uh, excessive. Sumobra doon sa compulsory legitim. Natamaan yung compulsory legitim. Bawal yun. So remember, the heirs of uh, T, yung testator, um, may petition the court para i-reduce yung um, remission or at least i-invalidate yung remission in so far as nagkaroon ng um, impairment doon sa compulsory legitimate which is 600,000. So itong si debtor, ang pwede lang talagang ma-remit ni creditor sa kanya. Creditor testator is um, 400,000 yung pre-portion. So pwede pang singilin ng mga heirs yung uh, 100,000 na part pa ng compulsory legitimate nila. Because remember, the compulsory legitim must not be impaired. If it is impaired, 
the remission or donation is called in officious. Bawal yung in officious remissions, bawal ang in officious donation. So in officious in short excessive. Yan. It's more than the compulsory legitimate. So yun ang tandaan natin. Um uh, in addition to that, remember while a person may make donations, no one can give more than which he has by uh, will. So uh no one can give by uh, more than that which he can give by a uh, will. So otherwise, the excess is inofficious and shall be reduced by the courts. So yun ang tang tang tandaan natin. Uh, because also, kung intervivos naman ang remission, tapos intervivos, ibig sabihin during the lifetime, tapos walang tinira yung uh, creditor slash donor dun sa uh, kanyang, wala siyang tinira para sa sarili niya, sufficient for uh, his own support and sufficient for the payment of his own debts in officious pa rin yung remission na yun. Kasi kahit na mag-donate ka, kailangan may tinitira ka para sa sarili mo. Yun ang sabi ng uh, law. What else? Uh, formalities of a donation are required in in, uh, in case of express remission. So, yun ang tandaan natin. Um, also, um, obligation to be remitted must be demandable at the time of remission. Otherwise, the remission is useless if the obligation has already prescribed uh, or it is not yet due, there is a, uh, remember, uh, useless uh, remission or ineffective remission. So, waivers or remission generally are not presumed. Uh, there must be clear and convincing evidence to show that there is actually a uh, remission or condemnation of uh, the debt. So, yung uh, evidence may be, nga pala class, walang term na evidence sa, uh, except for verb. Um, pero, yung plural ng evidence is not evidences, but it is uh, pieces of evidence. So, kung marami kayong uh, evidence, pieces of evidence, that is what you will use. Not evidences, because evidences is a verb. So, anyway, baka hindi nyo lang alam. Even lawyers, they commit mistakes like that. Simple, basic. So, anyway, um, uh, by express stipulation, kailangan it must be clearly and convincingly shown na merong express stipulation ang remission or uh, by conduct and remember yung conduct must admit of no other explanation kung hindi remission para maging um, clearly uh, established that there is in fact a uh, remission. Now, uh, if the remission is not accepted by the debtor, of course, is it, it is ineffective remission. But if the creditor does not uh, collect within the prescriptive period, remember, the debt will be extinguished by uh, prescription. So, extinctive prescription, which we have already talked about. Also, uh, remember the presumptions in the mission. In 1271, this is yung um, unang uh, example ng uh, implied or uh, tacit uh, remission. So, remember, if the debt is not yet paid, the creditor needs yung uh, document of uh, indebtedness. Uh, to prove yung uh, debt ng debtor. Now, uh, paano ba sisigilin ng creditor ang debt ng debtor? Remember, kailangan niyang ipakita yung promissory note, etc., etc., or other document of indebtedness. Kung wala yung promissory note, uh, hindi ma-prove ng creditor na may utang sa kanya ang debtor. Because remember also, class, na yung um, uh, burden of proof, remember yung sinabi ko sa inyo sa payment, the burden of proof to establish whether or not the debtor has a debt to the creditor lies on the creditor. So, yung burden nasa creditor to prove na may utang ang debtor. Now, uh, kung wala yung promissory note, how can the creditor prove the debt of the debtor? So, the presumption is in case the creditor voluntarily delivers the document of indebtedness to the debtor, the only logical conclusion that you can have is that the creditor is already remitting the debt of the debtor. Hindi na niya sisingilin. Why else will he give you a uh, promissory note? Eh, may hirapan na siyang maningil kung wala yung promissory note na yon, kasi wala na evidence of indebtedness. Now, uh, remember, sabi ng uh, law, the presumption is that uh, there is implied uh, remission. But, this presumption is prima facie, remember, uh, or it is rebuttable or disputable by uh, contrary evidence. So, uh, you can present evidence to show 
that uh, the debtor is in possession of the promissory note or other document of indebtedness for some other reason. Like what? Binigay ni creditor yung promissory note kay debtor so that the debtor can show it to his lawyer so the lawyer can inspect the promissory note. So, pwedeng ganun ang reason. So, this uh, presumption is only prima facie. Pwedeng siyang asirain by presenting contrary uh, evidence. Also, remember class, yung term na evidence, kung marami kayong evidence, ang plural ng evidence ay hindi evidences. Yung evidences ay verb. Verb yun, tandaan nyo. Ang plural ng evidence is um, pieces of evidence. So, kung marami kayong evidence, you have several pieces of evidence. That is what you have to remember. O ngayon, alam nyo na, ang plural ng evidence ay hindi evidences. Verb yung evidences. But remember class, pieces of evidence, yan ang plural. Uh, wag kayong mag-alala, even some lawyers, they do not know that, unfortunately. So, yun ang tandaan natin. Uh, present um, contrary evidence to prove that uh, the debtor is in possession uh, because of some other purpose or uh, reason. Also, this presumption is applicable to private documents instead of public documents. Yan, as you can see. Yung public documents kasi, sabi, it is easily uh, obtainable because it is a public record. Now, question, ano ba yung private document? Any writing actually is a private document. But when you go to a lawyer, di ba pumunta kayo sa akin, tapos pinanotaryo nyo yung um, private instrument nyo, or kung ano mang instrument yan, it will become a public uh, document. Yan. Pagka nanotaryo na ang document, it will become a public document. So it is very easy to obtain a copy because uh, we submit copies to the uh, court ng mga ninonotaryohan namin. So yun ang, and we also keep our own copies of uh, the uh, documents we notarize. But uh, remember, hindi lahat ng attorney nagnonotaryo kasi matrabaho. So yun ang tandaan nyo, it, the presumption, which is prima facie, will apply only to private uh, documents. Uh, also, class, take note that the, there is a presumption. Th these uh, are the rules in case of uh, the mission in joint or solidary obligations. Uh, remember, if obligation is joint, uh, presumption of the mission will uh, pertain only to the share of the debtor who is in possession of the promissory note or document of indebtedness. If it is solidary, remember, it will refer to the total obligation. So, let us say your debt is 5,000, tapos uh, lima kayong... Um, solidary uh, uh, debtors. If one of you is in possession of the promissory note, there is a disputable or prima facie presumption that uh, the entire obligation is uh, remitted. Now, if uh, joint debtors kayo lima na kay A yung um, promissory note, the presumption is that uh, only the share of A, which is 1,000, is being remitted by uh, the creditor. So, yun ang tandaan natin sa presumptions. Also, um, in case the document is found in the possession of the debtor, there is also a presumption that it is um, um, hindi uh, presumption is that it is voluntarily given or delivered by the creditor. Now, remember, pagka voluntarily delivered by the creditor, uh, the presumption of voluntary delivery will give rise to the presumption of uh, remission. So, um, pagka nasa nasa creditor pa yung um, instrument, uh, it is a presumption that the debt is not yet paid. Kasi bakit nasa creditor pa ang um, promissory note? Now, pagkabayad yan, kailangan ibigay sa inyo ng creditor yung promissory note. Kasi, tandaan nyo, sinabi ko sa inyo sa uh, chap, uh, section ng payment, kung ayaw mag-issue ng resibo or ayaw ibalik yung um, document of indebtedness, you can refuse to uh, pay and instead um, uh, go to court and consign yung inyong uh, payment. Yun ang sinabi ko sa inyo. Now, um, if the debtor is later found to be in the possession of um, uh, promissory note, remember, the presumption is that it is voluntarily delivered. Now, after it, it is presumed that it is voluntarily delivered, there is also a presumption of uh, remission. Although medyo ni-criticize ito, in particular ni De Leon, dapat daw ang... Uh, ang presumption made is that if the debtor is in possession of the promissory note, the presumption must be that there is a payment. Only once that uh, pay, non-payment is proven, 
doon lang mag arise ang presumption of uh, remission. Sabi lang ni uh, De Leon, hindi lang kanyang uh, pre, kri, uh, critic dyan. So anyway, um, effect of remission of the principal debt uh, with an accessory obligation. So remember, accessory follows principal. So um, if you remit the principal obligation, obviously the accessory obligation will be remitted because uh, yun nga, accessory will follow the principal. So principal remitted, accessory will follow as remitted also. Now, pwede yung accessory lang ang i-remit mo in which case there is partial uh, remission. So, yun ang kailangan nating tandaan. Sa so, principal obligation can exist without an accessory. Uh, pwedeng magkaroon ng partial remission. So, i-remit mo yung uh, interest, penalty, uh, mortgage, pledge, etc. But not the principal obligation. 12, uh, 74. Presumption in case the thing pledge is found in the possession of the debtor. So, merong sing sinangla na ngutang. Tapos, may sinangla itong si debtor. Uh, in pledge, remember class that it is necessary na i-surrender mo sa creditor yung uh, thing which is pledge. So, pagka nagsangla kayo sa pawn shop, kailangan nyo ibigay yung alahas ni doon. Hindi pwedeng sinangla nyo lang basta nang nasa inyo pa rin yung alahas. So, yun ang tandaan ninyo. Um, it can also be uh, put into in, into the possession of a third person by agreement of the creditor and uh, debtor. But uh, remember, if later on, the thing na sinangla mo is found in the hands of the debtor, um, the pledge is considered to have been uh, remitted, but not the principal obligation. So, yung debtor, uh, may utang pa rin siya, pero yung kanyang uh, thing uh, already, the thing na sinangla, hindi na niya kailangang ibalik. There is a presumption of remission of the pledge in his uh, favor. So, yun ang tandaan natin dyan. Um, siguro, i-add nyo na rin uh, in case of um, voluntary destruction of uh, the creditor of the document of indebtedness. It is, again, another form of uh, implied or tacit uh, remission. So, anyway, um, I think that's it for uh, section 3 of um, chapter 4. So, uh, please stand by for section 4. Um, we will talk about confusion or merger of rights. So uh, anyway, class, uh, good afternoon. Have a good day.